sorry, I was just checking in. Oh, Michael, didn't know you were still around. Well, I wasn't. I was just in the area, you know, checking on you, but... You know, you don't have to do that. I'm perfectly capable of doing observations on my own. I know, but I don't, I don't even know why the Institute hired you to sit me in the first place. I don't need anybody looking over my shoulder or fouling up my dad or anything of the sort. I feel like I'm on the verge of something extraordinary. Well, it will not make those shaftly eyes happy, but I can deal with them. I shot at my fair share of crowds back in the war. I can deal with those tender pressures. Well, it is nice to feel needed, sir, but I wasn't, I don't even know why they had you drive all the way up here for. I mean, it just seems like such a colossal waste of time for you. I mean, I know we'll never really worry about the uh, gasoline consumption, but still. <coughs> well, that's the thing, sir. The Institute didn't set me up here. They didn't? No, sir. First off, stop calling me, sir. You sound like the butler in a park. And second, who did send you? If you're not a German spy, are you? <laughs> I'll try. Oh. That's silly. No, it was your wife. My wife? Yes. Grace? That is her name, yes. I offered to Grace and check on me. Well, she called me over to ask me to ask you eh, that she would like you to be home more often at night. Oh, uh, she did wonder if it was at all possible for you to change your schedule to work in the daytime. <laughs> I'm an astronomer. Nighttime is essential. If I were to observe during the day, all I'd be able to do is say, hey, let's look at the sun. Just move the telescope over here and then... Oh, sweet Jesus, I'm blind! No. <laughs> I actually tried to explain this to her, sir. You did? Yes. Yeah. Well, at first, she gave me a very cold stare. She does that. <laughs> And then she decided it was a great time to aggressively start carving vegetables. I took this as a thinly failed threat. As you should. Mm, yeah, and that would help me to do what she asked me to do. You acted on a survival thing, so you, you did the right thing. Ah, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Hubble. Oh, please. Call me Ed. Mr. Hubble was my father's name. Which would make it your name as well. You're always so stern, aren't you, Michael? Yeah, well, if you keep changing what you want me to call you. Sir, Mr. Ed Hubble. Fair enough. So, you're not going to leave, are you? Not until you leave and are safe with the missus. I suppose there's no way to change your mind, is there? No, sir. Well, while you're here, why don't you make yourself useful and go downstairs and make us some coffee? Well, sure. What would you like? Surprise me. Ah, will do. Would you like a hint about my work, Michael? Sure. Everything is going to be bigger. Oh. Now. Now uh, what? Yeah. What? Are you all right? Oh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm fine. Couldn't, uh, couldn't be better. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go get you that, uh, that coffee now. Strange man. And Bravida is the key here. I know it is. That Seppi, it must be. Oh, Henrietta, you magnificent woman, it has to be. I think you're right. Yes, I think I'm right. Sweet Red! Who are you? How did you get in here? Did, did you drive Michael? Who are you? Me? Yes, well, I don't see anyone else here. Well, just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. There's no one else here, man. Is there? The human eye is so limited sometimes. You think that what you see is all that there is, and yet you're proven wrong about it constantly. And even then you're fearful of a change because you can't accept that you're wrong. This rumor is to think untold universes and people within. But since you can't see them, you bear them no mind. Young lady, you're, you're talking gibberish. What you're calling gibberish, scientists, is actually just the fact of the matter of the understanding of the world that's around us is constantly changing. Uh, that is true. Glad to hear it. Yes. Yes. No. Wait, how did you get in here? 
through the front door? But how? It's locked, and there are only four people with a key. You figured out you're the scientist. Uh, obviously, you broke in, which is pretty impressive for a frail looking woman such as yourself. Frail looking? Yeah. As a scientist, I have to look at the data and draw conclusions from it. Well, you're only considering one possibility. Didn't we just discuss this? Well, what other possibility is there? Well, I could have my molecules beamed here by some secret device the Germans have concocted. I've watched those people by reading. We took care of those folks in the ward. Sure you did. So that's obviously a lie. Of course it is. The front door was unlocked. Well, how? Oh, Michael. But how did you get past this? Oh, it's sneaky. Are you here to rob us? Rob! Because there is nothing valuable here. Okay, there is, but there's nothing valuable without me, and I'm not going anywhere. Well, good thing that's not why I'm here. We are in the middle of nowhere. You came here for some nefarious purpose. I did, I did. Well, do it another time. I have work to do. Yes, you do. And I don't have time for crazy thief women and strange looking clothes. Or you could be helped out, but have some crazy ideas, man. So they say. Ma'am, who, who are you? Why are you here? Oh, you know, just an interested onlooker. Ready for the big discovery? I will call Michael up here and have you removed. <coughs> I will see you just downstairs. Michael! Michael! Come here, I need you. Give him a break. He's overworked and underpaid. I told him he could go home, but the boy is just loyal. Maybe, or maybe he's just afraid. Maybe he really something better to do with his life. Or maybe he wants to be around when a famed astronomer makes a startling discovery. Well, I wouldn't call myself famed. Not at this point, no. <laughs> what do you mean, not at this point? I don't know. Where is Michael? Probably still making coffee, complicated stuff. Michael! Michael! Oh, damn him. He's probably just falling asleep. Oh, it is quite late. Can, can you just leave? I have work to do. Yes, you do. Just, just go, lady. Fine. I was going to leave anyway. I just wanted to keep your mind open. No need it for what's coming up. Keep on searching. How do you know about that? I just do. Here you are, sir, Mr. Hubble. Oh, Michael, it's you. Uh, yeah, it's me. <laughs> oh, I knew nothing bad could have happened. Well, no, I mean, sure, I could have spilled coffee and burned myself, you know, in a sensitive area, but... Oh, never mind that. Where were you? Why didn't you come on a call? I'm sorry? There was a crazy woman in here. I called you twice. Well, why didn't you stop her? I don't... What? I don't know. Not one of these things. One of what things? Never mind. Thanks for the coffee. Yeah, sure. Come sit with me, Michael. Sir? Pull up a chair. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm from Nebraska. Oh, grew up on a farm. Oh, no, no, I'm a big city kid. Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> Omaha, yeah. Big oh. city. Yes, you get lost in all the hustle and bustle, and it could drive a lesser man mad. The, the hustle and bustle of Omaha. Yeah, sure. well, yeah, and you know Los Angeles, say whatever you want about it, but that place will never be overcrowded. I don't know. There have been people moving in more and more. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to just sit outside and have pop. Yeah, sure. I suppose you can't get that in uh, Omaha. Oh. <sighs> you know, sometimes, when Ma and Paul were asleep, I sneak out of the house and into the city. And I find this abandoned farm field, and I just lay on the grass and look up at the stars. I didn't know which were which, or what names they made, or what shades they were, all that stuff, you know, because no one knew. So I just made my own names up and talked about the stars. 
that's basically how it was officially done. I wanted to become an astronomer to become an astronomer when I grew up, but my my parents thought that I should become a stockbroker instead. That's the only business that'll keep making money for the next century. Was what my dad said. Certainly. So then, grew up, got on, went on to college, and I studied that field I had to. My parents were paying for everything. And I got through it, and then I graduated with honors. Well, then how did you end up here? So I told you it didn't work out for you? Uh, well, two days after graduation, I decided I am going to pack my bags and head west. I wanted to make a name for myself as an astronomer. Naturally, my parents were a tad missed, but I was following a dream. I was writing box cards out there, and I kept writing to the institute begging for something, and I hadn't heard much back. Well then, uh, how did you end up here? Uh, well, I wanted to get that same feeling I had back when I was a child. So I, uh, I went out and I tried to find the same time. And I found one. It was by a field by the small pond. And I lay down on the grass and I looked up at the stars. And out of nowhere I heard this voice. And it said, Hey boy, you want to go fishing? And I look up, and I see the silhouette of a man on a boat holding a fishing pole. A fisherman at night? Yeah, I know. I thought it was odd, too. But then I thought, well, well this guy seems pretty friendly. So then I, I got on the boat, and we went fishing. And it was the worst night of my life. <laughs> Well, fishing can be pretty boring. But well, yeah, there's more. So, after about half an hour of silence, we just sat there, and then the man turns to me and says, Hey, Jimmy, you know, he called me Jimmy for some reason, I don't know why. He said, You ever wonder just how small everything is? And it was just, it was so weird and out of the blue. And I said, as an amateur astronomer, actually, the Milky Way is really big. And he looked at me and said, yeah, that's right. But after that, that's it. And you know, I, I probably should have said something. Why is that? I, well, because of what happened next. Maybe making something up wouldn't have been too far from the truth. I'm um, sorry? Yeah, just continue. So then we just uh, sat there. And then the man grabs his fishing pole, hooks it onto himself, and casts himself out into the lake. And then I saw him, and then he started drowning, and before he drowned, I think he said, there's an end to everything, Jimmy. Good God! Yes. So then I just put my hands in the lake, and I was paddling and swimming and swimming and swimming, and then I put my hand in the lake right there where he was, but he wasn't there anymore. So I think that I killed him. Am I some sort of monster? No, it was just it was, it was just a crazy person on a boat. Yeah. Yeah, I it, you know, it, it was dark out. He, you you couldn't yeah. see. Uh, he he probably just swam to the other side of the pond. Something. I I guess so. Yeah. You know, you have a crap about it. I think that makes you not a monster. Yeah. And you're right. <laughs> so uh, how did you end up here? Well, uh, I kept on writing to the Institute, and they told me that I can work here, but just for the love of all that, please, would I stop writing? <laughs> so I did. <laughs> uh, that's one way to do it. Yeah. So then they hired me and made me your assistant, and I get to witness some part of astronomical history, and it is all worth it. You've got a positive attitude, Michael. I like you. In fact, I'm going to let you know what I'm working on right now. Really? Yeah. Do you have the pictures on my desk? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. There's a point of light at the 
the same place on each one. It's the same point of light, but at different times, it's dimmer than other times. Why is that? It's, uh, it's a what do you call it? It's uh, a <laughs> simple yeah. We've known about these for a few years. But this one, this one is different. It's interesting because it's coming from the Andromeda Nebula. Well, why is that interesting, sir? Well, you see, the reason why it's interesting is because, look here. Oh, wait. I think I hear something. Um, call me when I get back. Tell me more, all right? Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Here. Oh, and, uh, sir, thank you for, you know, listening. It, it was my fault. Oh, and could you not tell anybody about the the whole fisherman thing? <laughs> yeah. I don't want any legal problems right now. <laughs> Already forgotten about it.
Well, what did you do to him? <sighs> nothing untoward. Oh, Michael. Yeah. Are you are you feeling okay? I could have faced him. I could have faced him. It's your fault. Whoa. It's your fault. What are you talking about? Out. Oh, my God. Let's go now. Well, this hasn't gone exactly to plan. Okay.
may have stopped time at one point, and you know everything I'm going to do. Who are you? What's he about to tell? You're the scientist, you figure it out. If nothing else. This has been some night. Yes, now can we go home? <laughs> Absolutely, dear. But first, <coughs> I have to do something. What's that? I gloat. <laughs> You'll see. Hey, Slipper. Guess what I just found? <laughs> Wait, how do you know about that? The red what? Oh, well, fine. Problem? No, everything is fine. Come on, dude. Let's go home. The whole universe is in front of us. Really just the road ahead. Oh, stop that. Everything is bigger. Well, I better go tell that fisherman's corpse. Now, well that wouldn't really be normal. And neither is talking to myself. <laughs> Alright, go me. Time to go.